In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirits. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the chair of St. Peter, and we celebrate the papacy, and how the church really is rooted on the tradition, on the revelation that Christ gave us through Peter, through the apostles. So as we come to celebrate this Mass, let's first call to mind our sins, especially the ways that we haven't responded generously to the revelation of God through the church. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no tempest may disturb us, for you have set us fast on the rock of the Apostle Peter's confession of faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I read from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, 
For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Wherever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we have a beautiful gospel reading, but there's one detail that jumps out. Simon, son of Jonah. Jonah's dad's name was not Jonah. In fact, this is done for effect to preach the gospel more clearly to us. Simon's dad is not Jonah. In fact, Jonah was the prophet in the Old Testament who ran away from God, got swallowed by a whale because he ran away from God, and then got spit out and went and preached to Nineveh half-heartedly, then wanted to die because Nineveh was converting. It was a crazy thing. But you see, Jonah had this personal relationship with God, unlike just about anyone else. And in some ways, maybe Jonah didn't want to share it. Jonah wanted to be the one guy for God. Jonah didn't want the Ninevites knowing God personally like he knew God personally. He didn't want them to have that blessing he didn't want to share. Also here, though, we see two dynamics. Jonah being highly blessed by God, but also Jonah not wanting to share and doubting God. How does it apply to Peter? Well, Peter very much is being invited into his personal relationship with God this very privileged relationship in being the first pope, by being trusted the keys of the kingdom, by being a singular person in so many ways in the church that had this privileged position. But Peter could not fall into the error of Jonah, trying to keep it for himself and running away. Now Peter, albeit, did run away when Christ was being condemned to death, but he came back. And when he came back, he came back generously. And he didn't lord it over people. He didn't hold these things to himself. Rather, he shared the gospel with all who would listen, to all who were being anointed by God to hear it. And this is essential for us as we celebrate the chair of St. Peter, that we recognize that we are privileged in the Catholic Church to have the fullness of truth, the fullness of the sacraments, that we are privileged to have this legacy that has been handed down onto us. We cannot hold it into ourselves, but on the same side, we can't water it down to such a degree that said, okay, everybody can come, all are welcome, whatever. Really what we need to do is to preach the truth that all may come to conversion, all may come to this personal relationship with Christ. This is done through the ministerial priesthood. In our first reading, we see this stern admonishment by St. Peter to the presbyters, to the priests, me, saying that we must be willing to share the gospel faithfully, that we can't lord it over people, that we need to be an example to the flock. And this is where all of us need to be united together, that we may all be witnesses in the way that Christ calls us to be, and that we may be one big happy church as we celebrate the glory of God and we celebrate the rich gifts that he has given to us. If we truly have a personal relationship with Christ, we will not be jealous of other people. If we truly have a personal relationship with Christ, our enthusiasm will know no bounds. And if we're truly in a personal love with Christ in the Trinity, we will be willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel, take hits for the team, take hits for those who need our help and need us to suffer in their name. This is where, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the chair of St. Peter, we don't celebrate some throne that is disconnected from humanity. We celebrate Christ's presence among us through the church, through the pope, through the bishops, through the priests. But we also celebrate the great call that we are called to be faithful to that chair. We are being called to be faithful to the apostles. There are many in the church right now who are trying to change things, who are trying to modernize things, who are trying to change the very character and nature of the priesthood, of the church, the meaning of the gospel, even the mass itself. We need to be very careful about this. And we need to be people who stand firm, rooted in tradition, 
not some false interpretation that is disjointed from the past 2,000 years, but truly be rooted with the cry of faith of so many generations, that we ourselves, rooted in this tradition, can have confidence in Christ being made present to us in the Eucharist and the other sacraments, and that we can have confidence in the gospel and the meaning of the gospel for each of us, that we may come to that personal relationship ourselves. For each of us, we don't find Christ personally without the church. And it's with the church that we continue to be formed and strengthened, that we may live and abide in that relationship, that personal relationship with the Trinity. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Of course, we're talking about the fulfillment of desire here. And if we're truly rooted in the Lord as our shepherd, we don't have desires outside of him. Everything is a blessing. Nothing is counted as loss. Everything is gain. God bless you. And as we come to this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we may hear the words of St. Peter in our first reading and truly live them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray in a special way for all the kids and teens in our catechetical programs and their catechists, that all of us may strive for a deeper holiness to truly be rooted in a personal relationship in Christ in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that through the church they are ready. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful to the church, to the revelation of you in the church, and to that personal relationship that you call us to. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all, his holy church. Grant, we pray, accept with favor, O Lord, we pray, the, off the prayers and offerings of your church, that with St. Peter as her shepherd, she may come to the eternal inheritance, for it is through his teaching that she holds the faith in its integrity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, the Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son, and so with angel and archangel, thrones and dominions, to all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command... We celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with all the elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace, to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To 
to our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, O Lord, be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who at our celebration of the feast day of the blessed Apostle Peter have nourished us by communion in the body and blood of Christ, grant, we pray, that this redeeming exchange may be for us a sacrament of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll definitely keep each other in prayer. God bless you.